Ever had your laser cutting like this? Weak cuts, fuzzy edges, even double lines? Nine times out of 10, that probably comes down to one thing. Your mirrors are out of alignment. In this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to get them dialed in on the Monfort EFFI 16S. Stick with me because once you understand this process, you have the confidence to keep your machine cutting clean for years to come. Hey everyone, I'm Brett and this is my laser garage. My wife and I run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home and this channel is all about helping you grow your own laser or CNC business. Today, we're diving into mirror alignment on the Monport EFFI 16S. In my opinion, mirror alignment, or otherwise known as your laser's optical path, is the number one reason why people struggle with poor laser performance. And on a large format machine like my EFFI 16S from Monport, small errors compound especially fast. If you're off just a little at the tube, by the time the beam travels to the opposite corner of the bed, it could be way off target. Any unaligned laser can cause a lot of frustration, but the good news is it's not hard to fix. For today's walkthrough, I'm assuming the basics are already taken care of. Your mirrors and optics are clean, your focus lens is free of damage, your bed is leveled, your laser head is square, and your cooling system is filled with distilled water that's circulating properly. If you're not sure how to check on those things, let me know down in the comments. I can cover them in a future video. First things first, we need to run a baseline test. Now, this isn't just another mirror alignment YouTube video. I'm actually going to purposely knock my machine out of alignment by randomly turning a bunch of the adjustment screws. That way, we'll walk through the entire procedure together from start to finish so we can bring our laser back into alignment. At the end of our alignment process, we'll come back and repeat this exact test so we can compare the before and after results. I think that's the best way to prove that alignment makes a huge difference. I'm going to cut two test cards out of quarter inch MDF core plywood. One up in the top left corner of the bed and another down in the bottom right. Doing these tests will highlight any errors in my layer's optical path and will really be able to see what a difference alignment makes. Check these out to see what usually happens when your laser is out of alignment. Notice how my first card from the top left corner looks okay, actually. I mean, I'm pretty shocked this thing even cut, to be honest. But watch what happens during my second test on the bottom right of the laser bed. We didn't make one single cut all the way through. This just goes to show the farther away you get from the laser tube, the more errors in your alignment will show up. Now, let's work on bringing my EFFI 16S back into alignment by going step by step through the entire process. I need this laser tomorrow for work, so we're under the gun to get it back up and running. Quick safety note and some expectations. Always wear proper CO2 laser rated safety glasses at any time you're pulsing the laser with the lid open. Or better yet, wear your safety glasses, but also keep the lid of the laser closed. Also, alignment takes patience, especially your first time. Don't try to rush it. And things go a lot smoother if you have a partner. One person can pulse and control the laser, while the other checks and adjusts the mirrors. I'm doing this demo on my Monport EFFI 16S, but the principles are the same on almost any CO2 gantry style laser. The only differences you might see are in how the mirror mounts are designed or how the nozzle is built possibly. The procedure itself, laser tube to mirror one, mirror one to mirror two, mirror two to mirror three, that's universal. Now, there are also different methods out there for mirror alignment. Some people use printed targets, others use different sequences. This is just the method I use and I've had great success with it. Let's start off by identifying the parts of the laser so terminology is clear. First, we have our laser tube located in the back of the machine. The tube is connected by tube mounts. These are the mirror adjustment knobs. Mirror one is closest to the laser tube in the back of the machine. Mirror two is on the left side of the machine on the gantry. And mirror number three is located at the laser head. The focus lens is located inside the laser head near the nozzle cone, and the controller panel is located in the front of the machine and will briefly be firing the laser by pressing the pulse button on the controller. Next up, let's take a look at the tools we'll need. It's pretty basic, just some various sizes of blue painter's tape, some clear packing tape, and possibly a set of needle nose pliers to loosen your mirror adjustment lock nuts. I won't be needing these because on my EFFI 16S, the mirror lock nuts are knurled thumb screws that I can loosen with my finger. As we go through this procedure, we'll be pulsing the laser onto tape. 
A pro tip here, instead of peeling off old tape and replacing it every single time, just stick a second or third layer right on top. Each new piece gives you a fresh target without losing your reference point. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so step one is aligning the laser tube to mirror number one. This is where your beam path begins, so getting this close is really important. First, I'll place a piece of painter's tape right over the hole for mirror number one so we can see exactly where the beam is hitting. Then, I'll have my assistant at the controller press the pulse button to fire a quick test mark. If that mark isn't close to the center of the tape we put on the mirror, we need to adjust the tube itself. On the EFFI 16S, the laser tube sits on adjustable mounts that have thumb screws for fine tuning. These let you move the tube up and down, and slotted screws allow you to move the tube side to side to bring the beam into position. To make those adjustments, start by loosening the mounting screws just enough so that the tube can shift slightly. Don't loosen them too much. Then, use the thumb screws on the brackets to nudge the tube in small increments. Now, one really important note here. Make sure you adjust both the front and the back of the mounts evenly. If you only move up one end, the tube will tilt and throw the beam off even worse. Keeping both ends level maintains a straight beam path to mirror number one. Oh, and if you have a laser where the tube mounts are fixed and don't adjust like mine, don't worry. You can still shim the tube mounts slightly using thin washers, cardstock, or even a folded business card. Some machines also allow small adjustments on the base of mirror number one itself to help fine tune the beam position. Once you've made your adjustments, tighten the mounts back down gently and pulse again. We're looking for that beam to land right near the center of the mirror, pretty much as close as we can get it. This is our starting point. If we don't get this right, the rest of the alignment simply won't track correctly. All right, with our beam hitting the center of mirror number one, we've established a solid starting point. Now it's time to make sure that the beam stays on track as it travels down the machine. So next, we'll move up to mirror number two, the one that's mounted on the gantry. We need to make sure that the beam stays centered as it moves along the y-axis. This is where we'll really start to fine tune the path and see how much difference a small adjustment can make. So step two is aligning mirror number one to mirror number two. This checks whether the beam stays true as it travels along the y-axis, from the back of the machine towards the front. First, I'll take a piece of painter's tape and place it directly over mirror two. Then I'll move the gantry all the way back to the top left corner, closest to mirror number one and press the pulse button to make our first mark. If your pulse doesn't even hit the tape, don't panic. That just means your beam is way off target. Grab a larger piece of tape or even a sticky note so you have a wider area to catch the beam. Use the mirror adjustment screws to locate the pulse on your larger piece of tape. This is a perfect time to talk about what each adjustment screw does. The top screw tilts the mirror up or down, which moves the beam vertically. The side screw tilts it left or right, and on some mounts, there's a third screw that moves the beam diagonally. When you adjust these, think tiny movements. A quarter or eighth of a turn can shift the beam a lot. So go slow, turn one screw just a little bit at a time, pulse again, and check the results before moving on. Now, I'll slide the gantry about halfway down the y-axis, right around the middle of the bed, and pulse again. On a large machine like the EFFI 16S, I like to start with the middle instead of jumping all the way to the front. It helps you see gradual changes without overcorrecting too soon. Once both marks are on the tape, compare them. They should overlap. If they don't, that means the beam is drifting as it travels down the bed, and we'll need to make some tweaks to mirror number one to bring it back in line. Keep pulsing and making small adjustments on mirror number one until those two burn marks overlap as perfectly as you can get it. That means the beam is staying consistent from front to back, and mirror number two is seeing a centered reflection from mirror number one. When you're happy with your alignment at this step, move the gantry to the front of the machine and repeat this process again. Remember, we want our beam hitting as close to the center of the mirror as possible in a consistent pattern all the way along the y-axis. When I feel confident in my alignment here, I also like to repeat this process in reverse, going from the front to the middle and to the back of the y-axis. I won't move forward to the next step until the beam is consistently hitting in the same spot all the way through these travel movements. Take your time. Alignment is a chain reaction. If this step isn't right, everything downstream will be off. So don't rush, 
double check, pulse again, and only move on once you're confident it's all dialed in. Don't worry, it's gonna take a little bit of time at first, but it's worth it. Now that we've got mirror number two lined up perfectly with mirror number one, the beam should be traveling straight and true along the y-axis. The next step is to make sure the accuracy holds up across the x-axis, or left to right, as the gantry moves across the bed. This step is very similar to the last one, but now we're working side to side in front of front to back. Step three works almost exactly the same way as step two. We're just shifting the direction of travel. Instead of moving the gantry front to back, we're going left to right across the x-axis. I'll start by placing a fresh piece of painter's tape right over mirror number three. Now, I'll move the laser head all the way to the left side of the gantry, right next to mirror number two, and press the pulse button to create our first mark. Next, I'll slide the head to about the middle of the bed and pulse again. When I compare these two marks, they should line up perfectly. If they don't, like in this case, that means the beam is drifting as it moves across the x-axis, and we'll need to adjust mirror number two to correct it. The screws on mirror number two control the angle of that reflection, but the adjustments are a little bit different than on mirror number one. On mirror number two, the top screw moves the left and right, and the bottom screw moves it up and down. Again, when you make these corrections, go slow, really slow. A tiny twist makes a big difference. Pulse, check, adjust, and pulse again. Once my near and middle positions are matching, I'll move the head all the way to the far right and pulse again, this time to confirm that alignment holds across the entire bed. And if it drifts, I don't ignore it. I come right back to the near and middle spots and fine tune again until the marks stay consistent. There's some back and forth here. Again, here's the takeaway, don't rush, take your time, double check, and even triple check before moving on. Sometimes I even find it helpful to draw a circle around the mirror opening to help me see exactly where the beam is hitting. Once those marks overlap cleanly from left to right, you know your beam is traveling straight across the x-axis, and you're ready for the final step. I'm very happy with these results so far, but I still want to do one more test before I move on to adjusting the last mirror. I like to go back briefly through the entire process just as an extra layer of verification. But since I've taken my time up to this point, it should go smoothly. I make pulses at five different locations on the laser bed, starting at the top left, moving to the bottom left, then to the center, then to the top right, and finally to the lower right. I watch the pulses on all these locations and ensure my pulses are overlapping and are centered. If you see any discrepancies in this step, go back and make the necessary adjustments before moving on. After completing this verification step, I'm again happy with my alignment and we're ready to move on to the last step. This is where all the work we've done comes together because even if your mirrors are aligned, if the beam clips the inside of the nozzle, you see all sorts of strange cutting and engraving issues. So let's get that dialed in. For this final step, we're aligning mirror number three so the beam passes cleanly through the center of the nozzle cone. I'm using a piece of clear packing tape for this test. It works best for me because you can actually see both the outline of the nozzle opening and the burn mark from your pulse right through the tape. I'll smooth the tape across the bottom of the nozzle, making sure it's tight and flat. Now, depending on your laser setup, you may need to temporarily remove your air assist tubing for this step. This is because on some machines, the air pump runs continuously whenever the laser is powered on, and that airflow can blow your tape off the nozzle before you can even pulse. If that's the case, just disconnect the tubing for a minute. On the EFFI 16S though, the air assist is software controlled so it only runs during the jobs. That means I don't need to disconnect anything. With everything ready, I'll press the pulse button and see where the beam lands. If your beam is properly aligned, the mark will be right in the center of the nozzle opening. But if you notice it's off to one side, or you see a double dot or even a half moon shaped burn, that usually means the beam is clipping the inside of the nozzle cone before it exits. That clipping is what causes double line symptoms. When engraving or cutting, it's basically the laser reflecting off the inner wall of the nose cone. To fix that, I'll make small adjustments to mirror number three just like before. Tiny turns, one screen at a time, then retest. If your beam is way off here and you don't get any marks at all, again, don't worry. You may need to remove the nozzle cone entirely so you can tape directly over the metal tube that the beam travels through. That gives you a bigger target to find the beam and bring it back to the center. Once you can see the beam passing through the center of the nozzle tube, you can reinstall the cone and make a few more fine adjustments to mirror number three until the mark lands dead center on the tape. Notice how I was able to walk the beam into the center of the nozzle by slowly moving the adjustment screws at mirror number three. Using clear packing tape really helps me see this. 
And after a little bit of trial and error, my beam is now perfectly centered through the nozzle cone. Now this has been the theme of the video, but I really, really think it's worth saying again. Take your time with this step. This is the last part of the alignment chain, and a few extra pulses now can save you hours of frustration. All right, with our beam now passing perfectly through the nozzle, it's time for the moment of truth, the post alignment cut test. At the very beginning of this video, we cut two test cards, one up in the top left corner and one down in the bottom right. Those were our baseline cuts back when the laser was intentionally out of alignment. Now we're going to repeat that exact same test to see what's changed. I'm using the same material here, quarter inch MDF core plywood, and the exact same speed and power settings. The only difference is that the optical path is now perfectly dialed in. Check out these tests now. Consistent lines, even, and clean edges across the entire bed. No double lines, no weak corners, no power loss. Here's the comparison. First, our before test. You can see the incomplete cuts and that faint double line effect from the beam clipping the inside of the nozzle. The test on the far right of the machine failed to cut entirely. Next, the after cut. Everything's clean and precise, maxing out the cut tests in both areas, even on the test all the way in that far right corner of the bed. That's the difference proper mirror alignment makes. You get full power, consistent engraving, and perfect focus from edge to edge. And that's how you align the mirrors on the Monport EFFI 16S. Remember the order, tube to mirror one, mirror one to mirror two, mirror two to mirror three, and then through the nozzle. So if your laser ever starts losing power, cutting inconsistently or showing ghosted lines, check your mirror alignment. A few minutes of fine tuning can completely change your results. And don't forget, if you're interested in purchasing a new Monport laser, I've got a special promo code just for you. Just use the link in the description of this video and type in the code BRETT10 at checkout. Monport's giving everyone who uses this code an extra 10% off their entire order for just a limited time. And that discount even stacks with any current sale they're running as well. Using that link really helps support the channel and helps me keep making more educational and fun videos like this one. If this video helped you out, drop a like, leave a comment below and subscribe so you don't miss future laser tips, tutorials, and project builds. I'm Brett, this is The Laser Garage, and I'll see you on the next one.